Hello guys, welcome back and welcome to this monthly reset. Today we're gonna to be focusing on resetting for the month of August, so let's jump right in. I'm gonna start by putting in the dates for my August calendar and my birthdays. Okay, so now that I've put in all the dates, all of my bills, all my birthdays, um, all my paydays for my corporate job, now before I do any sort of concrete resetting and planning for the month of August, I'm gonna take a look back at my quarterly goals and my yearly goals just to make sure when I set these goals, I'm on track with where I wanna go in the long term. So let's take a look at those quarterly goals. Okay, so let's get into these quarterly, well, yearly and quarterly goals that I have for the year before we reset for the month. So we're staying on track. My word of this year is push, and it was taken on many forms, not only pushing myself in a way to do more and achieve more, but also pushing my creativity, pushing myself to lean into just uncomfortable things like self-care, as crazy as that sounds. Um, so that's my word of the year. And uh, then my yearly goals, which I've kind of put into like vague terms, because I think you should have some privacy when it comes to your um, larger than life goals, but I like to also share so you guys can understand where I'm coming from. So they're a little vague. Uh, my first one is to prioritize my joy, also happy family life, increasing profit, connecting more, and reading more. So those are my goals for the year. And based on those yearly goals, I also have my quarterly goals. I also set things like my mantra for the quarter, which was to be for real. So be more realistic when I'm planning my goals and have grace for myself when planning and resetting. Uh, my priority this quarter is joy. I have had a lot of quarters that are faced on achievement and business and striving and I really want to focus on my own joy because that's the way to make my hustle sustainable but also just because I'm worthy of prior prioritizing my joy and I want to show up in that way. I'm saying yes to mindfulness this quarter, which is showing up in immaculate ways. I set that goal this quarter, but I was reminded of it this past month. I am saying, definitely saying yes to mindfulness. I'm being mindful of my experience in the present moment. And I'm saying no to trying to controlling. So trying to control my journey, trying to control my experiences. I'm letting things organically flow. I'm controlling what I can control that's in my control as far as it goes, as far as prioritizing my joy. But I am also co-creating with my higher power, which for me is God. Okay, so let's get into these quarterly goals. My quarterly goals for as far as prioritizing joy is a dry quarter three, which has turned into likely a lifestyle decision as well. I have given up alcohol. I think I am I am allowing myself to drink on like date nights and which um, is only like once a month for us and also on vacation because we're going to be in the south of France and, and amongst all these vineyards. But outside of that, I, I haven't been drinking and it, I have felt great. It also increases my risk from cancer. And some of you guys know I tested positive for the BRCA2. Doing more classes, so Pilates classes and being more mindful. Under family life, I wanted to do two France vlogs and a vacation photo book this quarter as a goal. Under increasing profit for this quarter, I I want to increase the uh, my email value so I have some email flows for people that buy my planner the mod ambition planner which I'm using in this video um, I also want to provide them a lot of value so I have a, pro, per, a post purchase email flow that I'm trying to finish increasing my creativity in my YouTube videos having more fun in my business as far as connecting more I want to hit 3,000 subscribers this quarter on YouTube so if you're watching please subscribe and help me out with that goal help girl out and and then I want to do weekly YouTube lives. And then as far as reading more, I wanted to finish The Covenant of Water. It's a 700 page book, but I actually finished it because it got so good, I couldn't put it down. So that's actually already achieved for this quarter. Okay, so let's move back into resetting for this month and look at some of these monthly goals that I had for the month of July. And I will kind of evaluate if I achieve them. 
So my intention for the month of July was joy, joy, joy. And to achieve that, my priority for this month was really being realistic with my goals and plans as a form of grace and self-care. And so the goals, let's see if I achieve them. My monthly first goal was self-care Sundays and one yoga class per week for my prioritizing my joy. My self-care Sundays did go down, but they didn't go down as I wanted them to go. I wanted to be painting. I have this paint by numbers kit that I've been wanting to start. And I would say that was I, that was a fail, if I'm honest. But I did use my Sundays in other ways, in other ways to care for myself, but I just didn't get around to painting. So that is definitely gonna be something I'm starting in August. And then the yoga class per week has been going really well. I've been going to Pilates or yoga um, twice a week and then getting on my treadmill to walk in between that during the week. So I'm really happy with the way that I've been prioritizing my physical health. Fun YouTube videos was my second goal. I think that I'm really happy with the videos that I've put out in the month of July. I've been able to be more creative, have a little bit more fun, and also provide value at the same time. I wanted to finish The Covenant of Water, the book, which was amazing. I want to talk to you guys a little bit about that in my favorites part of this video at the end. Uh, my weekly YouTube live, I think I did that every week except for last week. So three out of four, about 75% on that goal. And then one newsletter per week and one email for the sequence that I want to create per week was also done. So I did pretty good on my goals for the month of July. Um, some things to improve upon, but overall I did pretty well. Let's move into August. Okay, we're back in the August spread here. So let's take a look at some reflection for the past month. So last month's wins and then last month's challenges. Last month's wins, I did some screenings for um, the BRCA2 gene for my mammogram and for my ovaries, everything looked great. Of course, I have other steps that I have to take in this process, but so far, as far as the blood work and the screenings that I'm doing, it's definitely a win. I'm so grateful that everything has been coming up looking really good. Also, uh, I had some videos on YouTube that performed pretty well. I put a lot of work into my recent YouTube videos. Well, most of my videos, but a lot recently as I'm trying to change and be more creative. So I'm happy that they've been received well and that are doing really well on the channel. And then I, we also had some great family memories this month we went we did a lot of swimming with a lot of summer activities concerts in the park so I really enjoy just some really good family time good memory creating with um, the kiddos and my husband some of the challenges I faced this month were definitely an increase in anxiety and some of my OCD symptoms I have been going to therapy consistently which I've shared here on this channel and as you do more work some other things come out and it's like things get a little bit worse before they get better because you're facing certain things that you maybe avoided or that you um, compensated for. So I'm kind of dealing with that process or that point in my healing journey with dealing with OCD. And then another challenge for me is um, dealing with grief and loss, which is complicated because my grandmother is still with us, but she's not the same person. She's in hospice. She's slowly declining. Also my mother being a caretaker and watching the stress that is on her, that has been heavy on my heart as well and something that I'm dealing with and still processing and learning from what this moment in my life is here to teach me. And if you're planning and resetting along with me, be sure to pause at these different points if you haven't done so already. What were some of your wins and your challenges from last month that you're taking with you as you set up for this new month? Okay, so now let's take a moment to think about our intention for this month based on those quarterly goals, how we want to feel this month, and what is our priority before we dive into our monthly goals. So my intention this month is mindfulness and acceptance. So, so one of the things that I'm really leaning into or I want to lean into this month is mindfulness and acceptance of my emotional experience, of my thought experience, my physical experience without judgment. Because one of the things that's key to treating my anxiety and 
uh, in my OCD symptoms is not attaching so much to my thoughts, which for me, I am a heady person. I'm in my head a lot, which is a good thing, but also has its demon side. And I used to be very heavy into my mindfulness practices and I used to go to meditation retreats. I was teaching yoga. And I think that I didn't really notice so much that I had these OCD symptoms because I wasn't diagnosed till later after I had my kids um, was because I was so heavily into practices that helped, which were the treatment for these things not to mention, in addition, my hormones of being pregnant back to back increased my symptoms, which is common for a lot of folks. A uh, part of that is getting back to that lifestyle of being heavily into my meditation practice, my mindfulness practice, because I feel like it is kind of surfaced now. Also, my priority this month is on the same topic of that is present mindedness. So just staying in the present moment, not um, getting attached to thoughts about the past or attached to thoughts about the future. And with that is I want to feel non judgmental. I want to feel detached from thoughts and detached from emotions, not in the sense that I'm ignoring them or avoiding them, but not placing my identity in them or placing meaning in them that doesn't belong because thoughts are not always facts uh, and even if they are facts they're not always helpful and, and with that I want to stay connected to my true self the observer in me the God inside of me staying connected with that part of me um, that is who I truly am rather than getting too attached to my thoughts, if that makes sense. Thankfully, the first half of my month is gonna be vacationing in the south of France for the first two weeks, so I'm hoping that being mindful and present is gonna be relatively easy. All right, let's move into then my goals for this month, considering all that, considering my yearly goals, my quarterly goals, how I wanna feel, the lessons that I'm taking from the last month. Where do we wanna go specifically? These are gonna be our SMART goals for this month. If you're using the 12 week year strategy, these are gonna be your monthly priorities by which you're gonna plan your weeks and things like that. You can also call them your monthly goals. So let's get into it. So based on my yearly goal of prioritizing my joy, my first monthly goal is, is a daily mindfulness of thought meditation, which I have the Insight Timer app. I'll probably use the one on there because I really like it. But it's just a form of meditation where you resonate and connect with your inner observer in a non-judgmental way, you observe your thoughts and uh, and focus on your breath. For my yearly goal of a happy family life, my monthly goal is to do that France vacation book that I want to do. So take lots of pictures in France and then make that into a book that I can print. As far as increasing profit for my business, I want to do one new meta ad. I'll probably do that after vacation when I get back. And I also want to finish that post-purchase email flow that I mentioned to you guys. As far as connecting more, what I'm gonna do since I'm gonna be on vacation, I'm not gonna go on live, but I do wanna post some YouTube community posts, share some pictures of our travels while I'm there, and then do two YouTube lives for those other two weeks of the month when we come back. And then finally, for my goal of reading more this year, I want to start the book Cutting of Stone, which is by the same author as the book Covenant of Water. So what are your monthly goals? If you're open to it, share with me your most important monthly goal in the comments below. And let's move into my favorites for the month of July. This is the really fun part. Okay guys, most of my favorites from the month of July were actually revelations, quotes, and mantras, which, you know, I'm a thinker. I love all that stuff. And I had a really juicy month of July. I also had a lot of revelations just from being more in tune with my emotional experience and also reading this book. So I'm going to read to you guys some of my favorite quotes from this book. I have three of them and then some other revelations that I had. The first one is actually not a quote, but a concept that was discussed on the podcast between Oprah and the author of the book, Abraham Vergesi, I think is how you pronounce his last name. They were talking about the, and by the way, if you haven't read the book, maybe skip forward. I'll put the timestamp on where you can skip forward if you're still reading the book. Okay, so he discussed Big, the character Big Amachi and how she went through so much in her life and what was the key to getting through her life. So he said the key to getting through the ups and downs of life as demonstrated by this character, Big Amanchi, was faith and rituals. And that really, really spoke to me because faith for me has been a big piece of me letting go, being non 
judgmental, being more mindful, being not controlling, you know, that's kind of what I was saying no to this quarter. And so faith is how I do that by letting go, letting God, controlling what I can control in this, this life process and giving the rest to God. So that's the faith part. And then the rituals are those daily routines, those things that ground you, those things that help take care of you each day uh, as we move through life. And especially during the down parts of just continuing, even if you're having a bad day, those those routines that make you feel like a person, that keep you going. And the, another quote that I really like was from the character Lennon. He said, we have to live the question, not push the answer. And that again speaks to the point of life that I'm in right now is that you don't want to be manically manifesting or manically trying to force things to happen in your life, but doing what you can in this journey and allowing it to unfold organically as you co-create co-create with your higher power. Push the answer, but live the question. So coming from this place of being rather than forcing, which I just love. Chef's kiss. And then the last quote from the book that I wanted to mention said, we are merely renting these bodies of ours. You came into this world on an in breath and you will exit on an out breath, which I loved because the breath for me as a yoga teacher, as a, being into meditation has always symbolized so much as a grounding force. The breath has always been very powerful force in my life. So to hear that quote, I'm gonna read it again. We're where we are merely renting these bodies of ours. You came into this world on an in-breath and you will exit on an out-breath. And one of the reactions I wrote in my planner when I read this was, when we come into this wor world, we inspire. When we die, we expire. Inhale, exhale. Inspire, expire. How beautiful that an act that keeps us alive, the breath, is a beautiful metaphor for life itself birth and death, and life is that beautiful pause between the inhale and the exhale. Love that. Okay, so those were some of the quotes from the book that I really, really love. I also found a quote, or I saw a quote on social media that didn't have the author listed, but I wanted to share with you guys that said, to do the work, we need to rest, to read, to reconnect. It is the invisible labor that makes creative life possible. And as I push myself to be more creative, one of the things that I'm realizing, and I think I've mentioned this in videos past, is it takes time, it takes space, it takes energy to create, to bring forth something that didn't exist beforehand, and to try to be toxically productive while also pushing myself to create or two things that don't go together, especially for me, because when I write, when I create, when I think about an, a, a video idea or a piece of poetry, I need space, but I also, I need space to create, but I also need space in between to live life, to be inspired, to rejuvenate and all those things. So allowing myself to take up space, which is something that I first learned in yoga, is something that's coming back to me. And I really like that quote that reminded me that we need rest, we need to reconnect, we need to read, we need to take space in order to live a creative life to make that possible. And then the last kind of revelation that I had in the month of July, I'm gonna compose myself because just thinking about it gets me emotional, was something that came from um, a therapy experience that I had. And essentially I was having a difficult time accepting this brain of mine um, that is struggling with OCD, was struggling with anxiety, those types of things. And I said, oh, sometimes I really wish, like, why does this have to be me? Why do I have to deal with this brain? And my therapist reminded me that I also have a really beautiful brain. Um, and she complimented me, telling me about how, you know, intelligent I am. And, you know, with that comes two sides of the coin. And uh, it, it reminded me to appreciate myself holistically, even when I'm thinking about some of my flaws, uh, which goes into some of the, my uh, recovering perfectionism, that also comes with the other side of the coin, which is, uh, which is beauty, you know? Th there's also so much beauty in my brain as well. And so I wrote a little excerpt in my planner at the bottom, which I'll show you guys. 
I have like a little space for notes on the daily planning pages and that's kind of where I journal and write like reflections. And so this is one of the um, reflections that I wrote after this therapy session and I said, and it's titled, A Nest Creating Sacred Space for Life. A beautiful brain, accepting my beautiful brain with flaws, obsessions, and vigilance. This beautiful brain spews love, intelligence, creativity, and godly perspective. Intertwined with intrusive thoughts and vigilance left from trauma are twigs of rationale, pondering, grace, and beauty, like a nest creating sacred space for life. And um, I'm happy that I'm able to realize and take in the good and the bad without judging, right? Just noticing and accepting that there are multiple facets of who I am and this brain that has made me who I am and these experiences that have made me who I am and I'm um, taking it all. And then just lastly for my favorites, we'll end on a little bit of a lighter note. I want to share my favorite memories. So we went to um, one of my favorite memories, lots of good ones in July, uh, was 4th of July celebrating with my kids. That weekend we went to a like carnival festival in our neighborhood and the kids got their face painted. They had ice cream, we ate barbecue. That was really fun just seeing them like you know, they're at that age where they're starting to remember things and understand different concepts like holidays. So seeing them enjoy the 4th of July as kids kind of brought back that on my own nostalgia. My daughter stayed up to watch the fireworks. Um, so that was her first time seeing fireworks and she got so excited. Um, so that was one of my best memories from July. One of my proudest moments from the month of July is m my daughter is starting to read three letter words. So we're still working on her blending two letter words they're not really words but they're just like sounds however she wants to skip ahead in the book so sometimes i let her practice the three letter words even though she hasn't finished all the two letter words that are in the book and she's doing well with them so she's been able to read a few words on her own and i'm just so proud of her because she's been so persistent and then my favorite product that i purchased in the month of july i'm actually filming on right now is this new lens that i got it's the sigma 16 millimeter lens which i love i have the sigma 30 millimeter lens and it gives you that good blurry background like this one does, but it's a much tighter shot. Whereas the 16 millimeter lens that I'm on right now is a much, you can get more of the background. It's good for like vlogging. So I'm really loving this lens and I'm really happy with it. Those are all my favorites. Those are all my revelations. That's my plan for the month. Thank you for resetting with me and good luck with your own goals this month. I'm wishing you so much joy, so much love. Prioritize your joy. Take care of yourself. Enjoy the summer if you're outside enjoy being outside your hot girl or boy summer i love you so much for joining me and let me know what you think about um, some of the revelations or if you want to share any of your goals in the comments below let's chat and i'll see you guys probably in france cheers to planning manifesting and enjoying your dream life namaste